Um, so uh, we often talk about how open source accelerates innovation. Um, and there are a lot of, a lot of reasons for that. You know, fundamentally, open source provides access to the source code, uh, which allows an exchange of ideas, which allows uh, innovative ideas to develop more quickly in a wider pool of shared knowledge. Um, and this access to often superior knowledge outside of your company, um, it both improves the open source technology, so the source code that you're using, uh, it also provides an amazing enriched learning environment for your employees uh, because the number of people you can hire, the knowledge that you can hire, is always going to be much, much smaller than the pool of thousands of others outside the company who are working on similar technology. Um, it also provides a pool of recruits for future hires. You know, you could be working with someone in an open source environment for a year or two and you really understand this is a great developer and then you hire them instead of just trying to hire them cold and you have no idea if they actually understand the technology you're working on. Um, uh, the open source model gives you a flexibility of use uh, for an evolutionary approach to software, um, both stretching the software beyond its original purpose and also combining it in new ways that other people didn't think of. But you start at a, at a great advantage of having that base to evolve or build on or recombine. But the fact is, uh, open source innovation is not magic, right? You, you can't just take the word open source and slap it onto a project and, hey, magic, it's innovative. Um, there's a whole lot more to it than that. So there's a whole field of study around technology innovation and the capabilities that a company must build in order to effectively innovate in technology. Um, so my research the past uh, three years has been around applying that, uh, that set of core capabilities um, to open source. Uh, and it's both expanding the set and also focusing on specific ways that specific capabilities are relevant to open source. So there's four general categories uh, of capabilities. And you can kind of think of them in a, in a quadrant grid uh, split up by how strategically important the capability is and, and how easy it is to imitate. So the first quadrant is the core capabilities, which are both very difficult to imitate and also very strategically important. And these are procurement, collaboration, and customer value. So procurement in an open source context, uh, what, what the company has to learn, what they have to expand their knowledge, is understanding that um, external sources of value can be every bit as important as what they build themselves. And in certain contexts, they can be even more important than what they build themselves internally. Um, collaboration is completely critical even for purely internal innovation. Uh, but in an open source context, it becomes even more critical and, and in, in a sense, even more advanced because it's no longer enough to just collaborate with people who are sitting in the same office as you or with a team in the same company on the other side of the world. You have to um, sort of expand those skills to the ability to collaborate with distributed teams all around the world, working across different company boundaries, different cultural boundaries. Um, customer value, so it's a matter of keeping the customer in focus, even though you are changing your development methodologies, even though you are changing your, your strategy. Um, and in many ways, it's also about, uh, as you participate in open source, acting as an advocate for your customer. Um, so that the open source projects benefit from that relationship you've developed, that understanding that you've developed around what the customer needs. So the next set of capabilities, the next quadrant, these are difficult to imitate, but less strategically important. Um, none of these can derive the business alone, but they're very important. Uh, they have a lot, add a lot of value in supporting the core capabilities. Uh, so these are customer reputation, tracking trends, and development management. Um, Customer reputation, and this is well known in all business circles, uh, when you have a good reputation, you draw in more potential customers and established customers. Um, you, you, know, you want your customers to consider your products and services first uh, because they know you and they trust you. Um, 
So in, in open source, there's an extra dimension to this. A very, be very conscious of your reputation in an open source. And you know, for a lot of companies, this is why they sponsor events like the Paris Open Source Summit. This is why they send speakers. This is why um, they, they participate. Um, there, there's a dimension beyond just the immediate value they extract of, of ensuring that their customers know that they understand open source and they understand the projects that they're shipping to their customers. Tracking trends, um, again, you should do it for all technology. Uh, it's about understanding what technology is available, uh, how it could be part of your technology strategy, you know, not missing the boat as the technology outside continues to innovate and accelerate. Um, and, and it's about that, that sort of very key dimension of access to superior knowledge outside your firm. Um, the fact that there is a pool of rich open source knowledge outside of your company is of no value to you if you aren't paying attention to it. The third, development management. Um, open source isn't just an artifact, right? It isn't just a body of source code sitting out there that you can choose to use or not. Um, it's also a, a process. Uh, it's also a sort of body of knowledge. and understanding the way that your internal innovation processes, your internal development processes can be improved by those external styles of development uh, helps to accelerate. Um, and then there's a component also of learning to be effective in open source. Uh, it's been proven over and over again that the companies who participate in open source get their bugs fixed faster, get their features developed faster. Um, you get more value out of it if you're involved. But you don't just come to open source automatically knowing how to participate. That's a capability that you have to learn over time. The third set of capabilities, uh, these are less strategically important and easily available to all competitors. So they're easy to acquire and easy to imitate. Uh, people networking. So um, in this external body of knowledge, uh, you have to have the skills to uh, transmit and incorporate knowledge inside your company. And this is critical for all innovation, but with open source, you also have the dimension of outside the company, bringing knowledge in from outside the company and sharing knowledge to the outside world. Um, the next one is sharing product goals. So one of the basic ideas in technology innovation capabilities is you should be outsourcing any activities that are not a source of competitive advantage. Like if you aren't gaining anything by doing it yourself, you shouldn't be doing it yourself. Um, so the piece here to understand on open source is by collaborating on the core components, on the core open source components, you are effectively outsourcing those pieces that are not your competitive advantage. Um, and there's a real, uh, the sort of like the higher level skill here is sharing and collaborating on your product goals um, because the upstream development activities can be more effective if they know what their users need, if they know what the customers need. Um, and you yourself will gain the value of, you know, if you just never talk to the upstream open source at all, they will continue developing on their exact path. They will never know your specific needs. And it doesn't mean sharing your needs guarantees that they're going to immediately jump on it and make that their total focus. Um, but there's a big difference between the sort of enlightened collaborative development where everybody at the core understands the needs of everyone that's consuming their software. Uh, another piece is a reward for reputation. Um, so every company has a system for motivation and rewards. They, they look at the things they want to reward their employees for, and they set up whether it's bonuses or giving credit or recognition. Um, so very often, especially in older companies, the set of the system of motivation and rewards are geared towards technology of like 20 or 30 years ago. Um, so you kind of have to take a step back and rethink 
what are we motivating and how are we rewarding our employees? And is that for the right things in a current model of open source innovation? Uh, one of the things that companies often miss is rewarding employees for gaining recognition or status in an external open source project. Um, you know, if someone becomes a project leader externally or becomes recognized as a key figure, um, you need to formalize the fact that, that that's like equivalent to gaining an academic degree. Um, you know, they did a lot of work. They've, they worked hard to gain that reputation. And if you're not re recognizing or rewarding it, then you're actually discouraging things that are beneficial for your organization. So the fourth and final quadrant, uh, which is strategically important but freely available, uh, is complementary assets. So these are not things that you own, but they are things that uh, benefit you strategically in innovation. And in open source, that is obviously the source code itself. So it's this massive body, it's this asset that is of huge value to your company, but it's not something you actually own, and it's something that any of your competitors can access as well. So the trick here is that uh, when a body of source code uh, is used extensively by all of your competitors, it may in fact become a strategic necessity. Uh, if you choose to completely reinvent a technology that is available as open source instead of participating in that open source innovation, it may be a competitive disadvantage to you uh, because you're spending so much money just reinventing the wheel. So if I had the gra a graphic up, you'd see the uh, four quadrants, but the four are, are all based on difficulty of imitation or acquisition, you know, like actually building up the capability and strategic importance. Um, the interesting thing is uh, young companies these days tend to have a, a much greater advantage in understanding these capabilities right off the bat. And part of it is just the environment they've been raised up in. You know, a lot of company founders these days have been using and participating in open source since you know, their very youngest days, and so they don't even consciously think about the fact that they are applying these capabilities in their day-to-day -day strategy at their companies. Um, older companies, I have found, uh, need to take a much more conscious approach to building the capabilities necessary to succeed at open source innovation. And where we often see struggles is, is a company will come into open source and they will see, aha, open source innovation, that's brilliant. I want some of that. Um, let me just adopt this, this open source project, ship this as a product, done. I'm an innovative company. Um, and it doesn't really work like that, unfortunately. It is a source of failure. Um, so, you know, a lot of what, what I've been doing and what I will continue doing is uh, working with these companies uh, to, to try to help them really see it less as, uh, you know, like the, a magic label that you slap on top and see it more as this is a whole new world of innovative, t of technology innovation, and it requires a whole new set of skills, of capabilities. Um, but they are easy to learn, and they are, in fact, very small pieces that you can adap adapt over time and modify your company strategy to take the best advantage of open source technology innovation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alison.